Good morning, Team Offit. It's Colonel Gavin Marks, Commander of the 55th Wing, with you today to provide you an update on the status of Offit Air Force Base as it relates to COVID-19. First and foremost, my priorities have not changed. Priority one is to stop the spread. Priority two is to preserve mission. And priority three is to communicate with you as frequently and often as possible so that you have the latest information. I will tell you right now, Offit Air Force Base is HPCon Bravo. We still have zero confirmed cases of COVID-19 on the installation. With that said, we do have numerous tests that are outstanding. In other words, we're waiting for results on several outstanding cases. And as soon as we get those results, we will update the numbers and make sure that you're aware of them. A couple of other things that I wanna make you aware of. We're working with the commissary to allocate the first hour of every morning they're open exclusively for our high-risk populations and our alert forces. Additionally, our satellite pharmacy will go to drive-through services only starting tomorrow. More information will be put out on Facebook, web pages, and through email. And lastly, next week, the 55th wing at Offutt Air Force Base will be in a mission essential posture. More words will follow with regard to what that entails. The real reason that we're here this morning is to try, to, try our best to baseline understanding on a number of different regulations and guidelines with respect to COVID-19. With me today is Dr. Elena Wild, the Public Health Emergency Officer for Offutt Air Force Base and the Director of the Public Health Branch of our medical group. Dr. Elena Wild, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. Let's get started. So let's start with I am in a level three country. If I am in a level three country right now, what should I be doing? So you are holding in place for 60 days, which was the order passed down just recently. And then you will further self-quarantine for 14 days before you move, once you're given the freedom to move back to, to Konos or wherever you're going on from that point. 14 days with self-monitoring, with uh, taking your temperature twice a day and making sure that you're out of that window period for the COVID virus to show up before you would move. So let's say I'm in a level two country now, Doc, and I am free to travel back to the United States. As soon as I get back here, what should I be doing? So the first thing you would do again is go into quarantine and notify both your supervisor, your chain of command, as well as contact the clinic public health department or, or the primary care clinic as well. Um, and then again, it's a 14 day quarantine or restriction of movement where you are self monitoring for symptoms, checking your temperature twice a day and making sure that you're watching for any symptoms of COVID-19. Say, so let's talk about quarantine and restriction of movement. Can you explain to me what the difference is between quarantining someone and putting someone in isolation? Yes, sir. So quarantine is anybody who has potential exposure to the COVID-19 virus, which would include travel to those high risk countries or known exposure to somebody with COVID-19. And that's broadened now to people with symptoms consistent with COVID-19. Uh, those people will be quarantined without symptoms. So they are individuals who are not showing any signs of illness. They are put into quarantine in order to monitor them for the 14 day period that we expect the incubation period for COVID-19. If they do not have symptoms by the end of that 14 days, they're assumed to be clear and are free to go. Isolation is for people who have symptoms of COVID-19. So they are coughing, they have fevers, they have shortness of breath or um, a sore throat is sure. a, another one of those things. Um, and the biggest difference is symptomatic versus not symptomatic. When you're symptomatic, you are spreading higher viral load than when you're asymptomatic. So isolation is a little bit more uh, strict on making sure you're cleaning your environment, self-monitoring and et cetera. And you are actively shedding virus while you have those symptoms. Quarantine is a healthy person who's monitoring for symptoms to make sure that they don't develop and are not passing the virus to other people in the period of time before they develop any symptoms. So with that being said, now that we kind of understand the differences between quarantine and isolation, if I come into contact with someone that is suspected mm -hmm. of having COVID-19, what should I do? So you should go into self-quarantine, notify your chain of command. For 14 days, Doc? For 14 days. Okay. For 14 days, because that's the period of time, the incubation period of the COVID-19 virus. So it could present with symptoms at day three or day six or day 13, potentially. Unlikely that far out, but that's possible. So you would go into self-quarantine, monitor, report through your chain of command, as well as if you had any questions or concerns, public health or again, the PCM clinics. 
Um, we have a COVID task force that are answering those sort of questions. And you would self-monitor for those for that period of 14 days. Would anything change if I was in contact with someone that was confirmed to have COVID-19? No, sir. It's still 14 days okay. of quarantine and self-monitoring, whether it's a confirmed case or a suspected case, 14 days of self-quarantine with monitoring. Okay. Now, let me ask you, I've heard other numbers like seven days and three days being thrown about. Can you explain those? Yes, sir. Um, the CDC, as well as other national level public health and Nebraska public health, um, have pushed forward the number of seven days at a minimum once you're symptomatic. So from the onset of symptoms, which does not mean a positive COVID lab, it just means you meet those four symptoms criteria. So seven days at a minimum plus three days asymptomatic. So if, for example, you have symptoms for two days, you're still doing seven days of isolation. If you have symptoms for six days, you're doing nine days of isolation. You have to have three days without the symptoms. That is for people who are symptomatic, regardless of testing or not, and being released from that is where we need the help of our medical community. So you would go into isolation, and basically at the end of that seven day period or in that sort of window, you would be in contact with your primary health care provider or with public health to make sure that you're cleared, that you don't have symptoms, that you're good to go with that seven and three day rule. Um, and we're moving more towards that as the numbers grow in our communities and we're using the symptomatic criteria for isolation uh, as well as until we get better testing capabilities. Okay, so let me just make sure I understand, Doc, because um, you said quite a bit there. <laughs> So if I am symptomatic, mm -hmm. then I will go into a seven day period from the start of my symptoms, seven days plus uh, from start of symptoms, and then three days after that with no symptoms. With no symptoms, yes. And so let me ask this, let's say at the conclusion of my seven days, I still have symptoms, then I just continue yes. on until I stop having symptoms and then three plus days pass. three days, yes sir. Okay. So to be clear then, Dr. Jim, please let make sure that I'm not saying anything incorrectly. Mm -hmm. If I have symptoms, that's when the seven days starts applying to me. Yes, sir. And if, let's say, for example, I'm in a quarantine set of circumstances mm -hmm. and day 10 of my 14 days is when I start developing symptoms. Mm -hmm. From day 10 through day 17 now is added on yes, beyond sir. the 14 days for the symptom period, mm -hmm. plus three more days following that, assuming that at the conclusion of that seven day period, I no longer had symptoms. Yes, sir. So the seven day period Please. is, um, you can have symptoms for seven days or longer. Uh, most people are having symptoms for about that period or a little bit longer. The critical part is the three days at the end without symptoms, so you're not shedding virus after that. So it's a moving target, and sure. that's why we say the medical professionals will help you make that decision at the end of your Absolutely. seven plus three days. But yes, essentially you go straight into isolation anytime you show symptoms, whether it's from quarantine or not, um, and anticipate you're probably going to be in there for about 14 days, but helped by your public health or your medical providers through the seven days or however long you've got symptoms, plus three days without symptoms that the CDC have recommended. Doc, can you speak to testing right now in terms of numbers of testing and, and what's being done to increase the number? Yes, sir. So uh, nationally, we have a, a, a lower number of tests than we would like at this point of time, but I know that nationally, all the labs and everybody is working really hard to get um, increased testing capacity out to our people. Uh, to our clinics, to our healthcare workers, to our hospitals. Um, that production is increasing on a daily basis and more and more labs are becoming available. Uh, but at the moment, we are still reserving testing, lab testing for high-risk individuals, at-risk individuals, immune-compromised individuals, uh, hospital co personnel, um, specific groups of people that would benefit from lab testing at this point of time. Hey, Doc, I'll get another question for you. So when we talk about social distancing and mm -hmm. uh, avoiding contact, can you speak specifically about what exactly does that mean with respect to the social distancing and, and what do we mean when we talk about prolonged exposure? Okay, so, so with, with our understanding of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which we're basing on all of our recent studies because obviously it's a very new virus and we're looking at its older versions like SARS-CoV-1 that we saw back in the early 2000s, we are looking at how far it can spread via droplets that are aerosolized. Um, and how much exposure you need to it. So the rule of thumb is that we're saying close contact would be inside of six foot 
is what we're estimating would be a safe distance. And then prolonged exposure is, is a number that is, they're working on, but at the moment we're saying probably anything above 10 minutes and inside of six foot with a person who's symptomatic, so who's coughing or producing sputum or aerosolized virus into the air, that would be considered a close exposure. Greater than 10 minutes within six foot to somebody who's symptomatic coughing. Okay, so let me just kind of wrap this up by saying this. If I have a sore throat, a cough, a, I guess a consistent cough, mm -hmm. um, difficulty breathing, maybe tightness in my chest or mm -hmm. wheezing, or if I have a temperature of 100.4 or greater, yes, sir. what should I do? So you would immediately self-isolate. Okay. You would call your supervisor and let them know through the chain. And then depending on your symptoms, if you had significant shortness of breath or were having problems breathing or very high fevers that are not responding to medicine or if you're sick enough, obviously we want you to go to the emergency room. Hopefully with a call ahead so that they know to be expecting somebody who might be shedding virus put a mask on and go. Sure. But for the vast majority, about 80% approximately, are not gonna have those severe symptoms. So it's fine for them to go into immediate self-isolation, notify up through their chain. They can call into public health or the med group, their PCMs, and leave a message, which will get to their primary care provider or our nurse clinics or our COVID-19 task force that we've got there. Um, and they will reach back out and give people more education. But basically, it's the same as any respiratory virus that we see in our communities all the time. If you have symptoms, you should separate yourself from other people so that you're not contagious, whether that's COVID-19 or influenza A or B. Um, and then, you know, good fluid hydration. You can treat fevers and body aches and things like that with Tylenol if you need to. Um, so just symptomatic treatment, good hydration. Obviously separate yourself from people so that you're not shedding that virus, whichever virus it is and monitor your symptoms and then we'll go into the seven three day rule when you get through to your primary care or public health or et cetera. Dr. Elena Wild, thank you very much for helping us to better understand all of the myriad guidance that's out there with regard to COVID-19. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this segment for our COVID-19 update off at Air Force Base, Nebraska. Uh, you can expect that you will hear from me very soon with more but until then, please tune in to our Facebook pages. Please tune in to our web pages as well. And you can expect, again, that I will be in direct contact with you as frequently as I possibly can with more updates. Thank you very much.